Greetings, welcome back to Random Tronic. My name is Chris and today I want to show you something I recently got in the mail. And this is a bag of parts and components and a printed circuit board. And when put together this will become a stereo FM transmitter. And this was very kindly sent to me by IC Station. As you can see here it is on their website. It's currently priced at £5.24. It can be powered from about 5 volts, 4 to 6 volts, 20 to 40 milliamp current draw. Here is the picture of fully assembled unit and this is what we'll be aiming to achieve today. This module is based on the BH1417F and here is the data sheet for it. It basically has got all that's required to make a stereo FM transmitter. So let's see what we get for the £5.24. And I dare to say we get quite a lot. We've got the battery holder, so this will support four AA batteries, audio cable, printed circuit board, and if my camera focuses, there you go, it's a rather nice circuit board. You can see it's quite densely packed for a through-hole DIY kit. It's made by EQ Kit RF03PLL. A selection of resistors. This is probably an inductor. 3.5mm TRS receptacle. Little electric microphone. Single pole double throw switch. The 1417F IC itself. Some dip switches, so oh, I love dip switches. A terminal block, I think that's for connecting the power. Oh, one more switch. A crystal oscillator, 7.6 megahertz. A piece of wire, and that presumably is our antenna. Air core inductors, so essentially just a piece of wire that's been preformed for us, which is nice. Now there is a tranny, a few of them. Everyone loves when I call them trannies. Yes, those are trannies. Tranny, of course, is a short for transistor. And those are 59104910 and 9108. So we've got two different types of trannies. A diode, an LED diode, I must say. Then, yeah, that's for presumably indicating the power. It's always good to know something's working. Oh, one more tranny. 9018 glass package diode 11 altogether 11 electrolytic caps oh, one more glass package diode no less than 21 unless I counted wrong ceramic capacitors so I guess the best approach is to start with the lowest or smallest components first which in this case will be the IC itself BH1417F it's not a fully small. This is quite easily soldered with just a good amount of flux and regular soldering iron. However, today I want to try something different because it is a surface mount part and we've got some hot air. I've also recently got this solder paste. I've just noticed that this is 183 degrees. So I guess that's the melting point for it. I got this off of eBay a while back and I wanted for an opportunity to try it out so let's do and here is the paste of how it looks like it's yeah fairly mushy consistency dubbing appliance and just push it across all the pads it's not important to be very precise because in theory the paste should wick onto the pads place the IC of course observing the polarity here we've got the little dot which indicates pin 1 and we've got an indent so those have to be on the same side and let's see how will it work I've got the hot air set to 240 degrees and let's set the air to max because I guess nothing is going to fly off okay I've upped the temperature a little bit because I'm not sure I can trust the temperature on this hot air station Oh, there we go, it's starting to flow. It seems like it hasn't wetted two of the pads.
So we've got one here that somehow hasn't wetted and one on this side. But we can fix that up later on when we solder with the iron. Okay, I guess it works for the first time, but yeah, a bit more practice needed. Needed. I can't say I really like the way it's formed. It's really uneven. Maybe I should have been more careful with the solder paste, but that's all right. That will do for now. Actually, let's try it again. So I've added a little bit of solder paste onto those parts that haven't wetted, and let's try that one more time while the board is still hot. There we go. Okay, that looks alright I guess. Now let's stuff all the resistors in. And I'm gonna begin with this, those are 10k. Strangely those are the old carbon resistors, but alright. And I know how angry some people buy pulling the tape off like that you should really cut them off but oh well it is what it is I've never had a problem with glue causing me problems so yeah let's stuff it here I'm gonna stuff all the 10 k's first now the 2.2 K because just because that's the second most abundant quantity in this kit and those are all the resistors in. Now we have to flip it over and get it soldered. Okay, there is the board so far, and so far, so good. Now the LED, the way it's arranged here, I think it's supposed to go this way, but it falls through all the way down to the board level, and I don't exactly like that, because very often those LEDs can get quite easily overheated by the soldering, if they are placed all the way like this. If they stand off the board a little bit, then it's fine, but yeah, they're more, far more resilient that way. But soldering very closely to the package can overheat the LEDs and yeah, those don't like the heat very much. So what I've done, I've got a small piece of insulation from a wire that I stripped. I'm going to put that on the legs and put it in like so. Actually, perhaps that's a little bit too long. So yeah, there we go, like this. And yeah, this will provide a little bit of a standoff for the LED. So it can stay proud of the board a little bit and prevent getting overheated. The microphone, this gun, okay, he can go, that can go straight flat to the board. And we have those two diodes. One should go here, I think it's a Xeno diode. And another one goes here, which is a different diode, marked as VD1. So, okay, let's look closer at those, see if we can work out what is what. 3,5T, okay. C4V3,5T. So this, I think, could be a Zener diode. And yes, it is. So the Zeno diode goes here, and the smaller one is a Varactor diode. So, in other words, it's a voltage controlled variable capacitor, and those are often used for tuning circuits. That's why it's marked VD1 for Varactor. Two coils, L28 turns, so that would be the bigger one, and five turns, that would be the smaller one. Here we can have a PCB inductor this little trace over here going left and right zigzagging it always gets me interested so is that a component that was specced in the schematic or was it just I don't know 
just a last minute addition oh let's put a tiny bit of inductance on here that will make the circuit more reliable I don't know and the little ceramic caps right I've just noticed something so a slight problem and I've double checked this with the instructions but which one was it 22 this one here so it's a 22 picofarad ceramic capacitor and I've got two of them and I've got 21 capacitors in total and I've checked with the instructions and there is supposed to be only one of those but I've got two before I refer to the instructions I spent a while looking on the board where to stuff the second one in and that's when I started thinking that something's not right but next to it is a 3 picofarad capacitor and I haven't got it because I've got two of this one that shouldn't be a problem though because I've dug through my spare parts and I've got a selection of little SMD caps and I will be able to solder this one in this is 3 picofarad as well so yeah a slight mistake happened there uh, I'm sure someone counted all the individual caps but unfortunately something got mixed up and I got two of one kind and none of the other fill the through holes of the 3 picofarad with solder like this and now I'm I think I'm going to have to turn it a little bit because unfortunately my elbows don't bend that far. Give it a little bit of flux. I just tucked it in place so it stays relatively fixed. I'll reduce the airflow because we'll blow all the components off. There we go, that flew in nicely. Really, we could replace all the capacitors with little ceramic ones like this. Shouldn't be a problem. And time for the trannies. So there are two types, 9018s which there is three of mind the right orientation not like the last kit I put together where I've put one of the trannies backwards and 9014 goes here and finally a handful of big connectors components and so on I think if this kit works very well that's going straight into my car I will be able to plug my phone into it and listen to my favorite podcasts while I'm driving to work. The last part of the puzzle is the piece of wire that's meant to serve as an antenna right next to where that fancy PCB inductor is. Okay, I did think I was short of something and it was the dip switches that fell out when I turned the board around. I forgot about them. So it's not complete until it's complete there you go now it's done and today is not tomorrow but the day after and let's have a test if this works so we've completed it put it together I've put some batteries into the pack provided and oh, our SDR radio came on let's let's flick the switch and see if anything happens I'm set to, I think, according to this, 87.7. .7. It's not entirely clear which one is low or high over here. Maybe it's this way. Okay, I'm seeing something. It's transmitting on two frequencies. Okay, this does work. However, it's not working as intended. It makes me wonder, is it something to do with the cap that I've put in here and replaced? It's echoing my voice a little bit. I'm sure you can see here on the waterfall it seems that it's transmitting on two separate frequencies which doesn't seem right let's try a different frequency perhaps those are just harmonics yeah I would be surprised for this to be so unclean oh yeah there is more over here you can see very faint but those are 
if I switch this off, those should disappear. Yeah. So this is very unclean. A whole bunch of noises popping out of this. One, two, one, two, one, two, three. And that's 86.87 megahertz, and it's supposed to be 88.1. Oh, it seems to have even lost what I had before. A one, two, one, two, oh. Here it is. One, two. One, two. One, two, one, two, and three, three. Okay, that's quite clear. And that's quite clear and quite... Uh, that's what I would expect. The sound is somewhat nice and yeah, we've got um, a clean... Somewhat clean, but there's still a huge amount of harmonics on here. You can see this is not a... This should be as one clear line on the uh, SDR waterfall. And there are distinct three lines. And you can see the three separate peaks. And besides, this is at 84.1 megahertz, so this will not be able to receive... I won't be able to receive the signal on the standard FM radio. Of course, it should look something like this. Uh, this is a commercial radio station transmitting, so we won't be playing that because we get a strikeout. Fortunately for us, white noise is not copyrighted. Hmm, but this is again 88.8. .8 and number one the bandwidth is not right because that should be broadcasting uh well the broadcast fm which is quite wide signal in terms of bandwidth and i can't see this taking the whole bandwidth up the way it should and secondly it's uh, much too low in the frequency so i must have screwed something up it's also very unstable which is uh surprising for a kit that's you know, the, it's clocked by a crystal oscillator. Okay, because I can't see anything wrong with this visually, and I have looked closely, both front and back, and I can't see anything wrong, the only thing that comes to my mind, this is very unlikely for the kit to be wrong, it must have been me who screwed out something royally, and I've checked the transistors and other components that the right ones are in the right place, the only thing that comes to my mind, this seems to be not responding, it's transmitting but it's unstable and the frequency is wrong pretty much all the time. Um, it's not reacting to the switches, or particularly this one at all. This one it does a little bit but it's not doing what it's supposed to be doing. Um, my suspicion is that either there is a short somewhere either under the IC and I'm not seeing it or maybe under the switches or there is a problem with one of the capacitors, one or more capacitors, because I've put them so close to the board, you know, those ceramic cups, there is a little bit of ceramic coating on the legs. I'm not sure what to do now. I could, I guess, rip all of them out and put little surface mount capacitors like this. Check this out. I'm not sure if I'm onto something, but Checking voltages, there is a Zener diode over here and the silk screen calls for a 4.3 volt. Can you see? Yeah, 4.3 volt Zener. And I've been screwing about trying to resolder everything. I've removed the chip and put it back in to make sure that a little piece of wire didn't get stuck underneath and nothing was there. So. That's why it's a little bit messy, but when I measure the voltage on the Xena, it's 3.5 volts, not 4.3 as the silkscreen describes. So let me refer to the schematic and the instructions and double check what sort of value that should be. Right, check this out. So I got it to work somewhat, but it's still not right. I've rechecked all the solder joints and so on, and now it is transmitting. However, it's not the right frequency at the moment. I've been screwing about with the capacitance across the varactor, which could affect the frequency a little bit. However, this is what I would expect from the transmission. So it's transmitting really nicely, uh, very clear sound and, and so on. It's very wide bandwidth as well. However, the PLL, from what I've gathered so far, 
doesn't lock. So the PLL on here is drifting all the time. I have to, if I keep it on this frequency for a long while, it will drift away. And like right now it's starting to drift. You can hear the sound goes terrible because it's tuning out. But if I move it a little bit, there you go. So now it's at 87. So it goes up and down a couple of megahertz. And I have no idea what causes that. So I've checked all the components to make sure everything's in the right place. And yeah, there you go. It's going away again. And I don't know what's causing that. So I'm not sure what else. Oh, I've lost it now. Hold on, where is it? Oh, there it is. Hello, one, two, one, two, three. So there you go. So it, it works. However, there is a problem that I've likely introduced during the making of this. Let me switch this off be, get to get rid of the echo. So while I was making this, I must have made something wrong. From what I understand, the, this, is, this works on PLL, so phase locked loop, and it's supposed to lock onto frequency. It's supposed to lock, but it's not locking. Now, for this one, I think that's going to be it in terms of this video. I will revisit this likely to uh, get this to work one way or another. Maybe you have spotted something in the video and you can tell me uh, what has gone wrong. Or maybe you can give me a clue or point me in the right direction of what could be going wrong with this. Why is this PLL not locking? Because at this point, I simply don't know. In theory, I've looked at the data sheet and the schematic looks okay it is what it's supposed to be uh, could the varactor be dodgy um, could the chip itself be dodgy i don't know well the, it seems to be working i think if either of those components was faulty it would have not worked at all however if you want to figure out if you get a little bit more luck than myself building this kit check out the link in the description and get one yourself try to build it and let me know in the comments if you've succeeded it's only a few quid so uh, why not for today that's it thank you very much for sticking around please subscribe if you haven't done so already and for the time being take care